Oh! What is going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review on something. I feel like I am backtracking. Don't even know what I'm saying. Here we go. What we're going to be looking at today is called the Digiflavor Helix Kit. I feel like I've been neglecting this a little bit, so I just really want to touch base. I was kind of looking through the box, and I'm running dangerously, dangerously low on mods. However, that doesn't mean that I don't have enough of stuff to last me the next eight years. It may not be fun for most people to watch me, because it's like, Jay, this came out in 2003. Like, no one gives a shit about the old Q-tips with the cardboard inserts. What we're going to be looking at today is called the Digiflavor Helix Kit. So when I got this, I was really pumped up about it because all it reminded me was the original Ego One. Before there were pod-based systems, really the only other option you had was like a sub-ohm tank, sub-box kit by Kangertech. There were a couple companies that made things that were on the fly, out of the box, good to go. Built-in batteries have died down drastically, and I think... Well, I, I'd like to think the reason why that is, is because it saves on weight. Obviously, it saves on weight because there's no battery in it. But if they're shipping something from China to the States, if there's a battery in it, it's going to weigh more than as if there was no battery in it. Also, most pod-based systems already have batteries. And this isn't really necessarily a pod-based system per se. You can kind of see that it hasn't been opened up. It's totally sealed. It's one of those out-of-the-box, literally, jammies. Little sub ohm tank on the top, kind of just, if you're just getting into vaping, this is something that you would utilize. There's really only three brackets. Back in the day when you would start vaping, some people just started off of mech mods, and still to this day, there are people. I never recommend that for a multitude of reasons, especially if you've never done a build before, worked on a drip or an RTA, it doesn't even matter, or just put a battery inside of a tube outside of a flashlight. And I said flashlight. You get either pod-based systems, which everybody knows, the little jammies that you, has a pod, you put the juice in, some have coils that come out, others just are all, all in one. Then you have systems like this, which are stick or tube style, and that's all one piece. I know you're not asking a question, but that is a good question. What is the last device that has a tank built in to the actual mod? Apparently, someone on Facebook knows. Bree, do you have anything? The Smoke Pen 22. There you go. Smoke Pen 22 is a great example. There's not a lot, but they still do make those currently. Very rare. And then you have devices like this. Of course, you have box mods where, like this jammy, you just kind of put the tank on and be done with it. But they, they make this, and we're talking really like basic starter kit shit. Then they have ones like this that already has a battery built in. You could take the tank off, and if later on down the road you want to upgrade your system, you're able to take that off and then put it on a box mine and be used it that way. That's typically the way you see it, or pod. The whole built-in system is very, very, very rare. And what really sucks with any kind of built-in battery is through time of charging. Now, I'm not saying that there's not people out there that haven't charged their device 500 times and it totally works fine realistically about three to 500 charges and then that battery is essentially depleted so you have to buy another one that's why lipo sucks so without further ado let me just bring this down show everything inside of the box put some juice in it and then give you my final thoughts on the helix kit by digiflavor i always get digiflavor and dofpo mixed up just because maybe it's the d's throwing those d's and elbows yo Let's flip it. Digi Flavor Helix Kit. Again, this is kind of an all-in-one. You can separate the tank from the actual mod itself. Down there on the bottom, three output modes. On the top, their website. On the bottom, Born for Flavor. Nice. Social media on the other side. And then on the other side, Digi Flavor. On the back side of the box, go ahead and give that a freeze frame so you can read that. They have some highlighted information right here, and then down there on the bottom you have your UPC, a scratch and sniff. This is going to be Cricket Popsicle, flavor and scented, and then another scannable code there. So let's just go ahead and open this up. Wow, that was... That's a very... Oh, okay. So you see those stickers. I didn't even bother to cut those, and... They just kind of fell apart. Oh my God, you better shut up right now. Oh my God, what? 
Okay, I'm about ready to lose my shit. Got the mod that doesn't have a built-in battery. Wow, okay. This is gonna kind of change the whole avenue of approach here. And then a disposable tank. Disposable tanks are hit and miss. First off, you can't really swap out the coils. What you see is what you get. It's an extensive amount of waste that is very, very much unneeded. What they could have done to really make this that much better is be able to swap that out. But this is like a growing phase and I hope that this dies down very, very quickly. While I get the whole fad that is going on with plastic tanks, the problem I have is when it's in a starter kit and that's all you get is just one, is it's going to be very, very disheartening for someone that's just opening this up they put the juice in they're getting all excited they're pumped up and then whoops okay you got the shit all over your fingers now you have to deal with sticky fingers while you're trying to put this all back together at that point you're probably just gonna throw this away that's kind of the downfall of this also it can't really be sold as a starter kit per se because if you just buy this thinking you're gonna be able to jump into a vaping you're going to need a battery for this. Inside of the box on the bottom, you're gonna get a micro USB to charge this. This is a single 18650, so I don't recommend you really to charge this unless you absolutely have to. Just take the battery out and put a new battery in. Very, very large user manual for such a simple device. The user manual being this thick is absolutely redundant. The odd thing is, is it's only two pieces of paper. You get this, this, so that's one, this is two, and it automatically goes into a different language. And that just goes on and on and on and on. What a waste of friggin' paper. Oh my God. Don't get me wrong, I could give a shit about a pine tree, I'm just saying. Get a little warranty card, very, very small fine print. That's strange for something you're gonna need to fill out. You also get a little promotional card just showing you the device and then a warning card. Not too much to go over on this tank down here. You do see your airflow adjustment, a dual configuration, so it's gonna be a lot of airflow. Really nice size ports. Can't really show you too much in regards to on the inside there, but I'm assuming that's some type of mesh. Let's see. Yep, that is mesh. And the way that you fill this up is you just pop this guy up here and just put your juice right in there. Maybe a pain in the ass for most people considering that when you do this, that drip tip may get in the way of you filling this up. The starter kits like this, you have to let sit for a very, very, very long time. There's something about plastic mods that really, really, really pump me up. And then especially when it has an external battery like this, if they can make a mod this small that is somewhat regulated in a sense that you could adjust the power, you get three different output modes. You have bypass, which is basically the power of the battery, which is probably what you're going to want to use. 3.4 and 3.2. Very, very strange that it has a step down chip inside of it. High grade grade ABS plastic. This is the same shit that you see in most cars on dashboards and door panels. Five clicks, turns it on, and then there's your indication. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's it. I guess if you were creative enough. Wow, 24, look at that. Let's see if this fires. What the fuck is that noise? Shh, listen. Let me get that by the speaker. Hold on, listen. Wow, that is the weirdest sound I have ever heard come out of a mod. Listen. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Praxis, the Decimus jammy. It had that, uh, what is that? It had a certain chip in it. I can't remember what it is, but it ticks just like that. It's like a MOSFET, if you will. PWM, pulse width modulation. Okay, so listen. You heard that? That is the mod. It's the chip that's on the inside there. It is a PWM. It's just uh, adjustable in a sense to where you can configure that. The red is going to be the lowest, the blue is going to be right in the middle, and then green is going to be basically what the battery power is. Like how much battery is left is how this is going to function. And then down there on the bottom, you have other indicators showing you, okay, when there's only one LED lit up on the bottom is when that is dying. Right now it's three, but it's in red, I think. I really thoroughly think that this thing is absolutely cute as shit. Notice how it changed my whole attitude when I realized that that was a single 18650. 
looking. I mean, it's not absolutely gorgeous, but it is what it is. Once again, that is the Digiflavor Helix Kit. Let's bring it on the top. Back on top with the Digiflavor Helix Starter Kit. You know what I'm just now putting together? This tank that's on the top of this, Lume, is the same exact tank that's on top of the Lucid Kit. This is Digiflavor. Digiflavor is Geek Vape. I don't know why I didn't put that together before. You'd be real hard pressed to tell me right now that Geek Vape and Digiflavor has no affiliation. Like, come on. It's the same exact tank. Literally, look at the tank. Now go look at the Geek Vape Lucid. Wow, okay. I can't use this tank at full power because it tastes absolutely burnt. And this has been sitting probably for about 19 minutes, maybe a little bit more, because I did a review for another product, which I opened the box and did topside. So the fact that this is still topside, no pun intended, actually, tough post, shit. I always get them mixed up. Okay. Oh. Oh. And that's on blue. This is what I'm talking about. Now that I have this, right, the wicking is not good. It doesn't suffice. So what has to happen now, I have to buy another disposable tank or use a sub-owned tank that has a replaceable coil. This is literally trash. I cannot use this tank at all. Well, maybe in the lowest. I have to go to red. Right? Because red's the lowest. Red. At its lowest setting, it isn't terrible. It's nowhere near fantastic. Although the tank is not very good whatsoever, the mod is. day. I don't know if I would put a high-end tank like this on top of a piece of plastic, but... It could work. Because this is a regulated, you know, bypass mode type deal like mech or 3.4 3.2 you're really going to want to use something that has lower resistance if you try to put something on here that's above a 0.6 the ramp up time is going to be absolutely horrendous it will take forever and i guess that just works for the tank that's included but the tank that's included the coil that is in there is no good so i don't know if i would really consider this a starter kit the mod Look, I get a lot of shit for this because I like mods like this. It's disposable, it's easy to use, it's super concealable. Like, that is legitimately the same size as, like, the Smoke New York. Or, it's not New York, it's Nord. New York is the drip. Novo, Lost Vape Orion. Keep in mind, you do have to add something on the top of that, but, man, oh, God, do I like this mod. So, if I was to rate the mod on a 0 to 10, I don't think you could buy just the mod, but this kit is not expensive. This is like an upgraded version. Mm. You remember the K-Box? Had the little settings and you go all the way up to 40 watts? I'm trying to think if there's anything else like this. I'm probably gonna give it a seven. I like it that much. As far as a kit is concerned, it doesn't have a battery. The coils are absolutely trash. Well, what I have is trash. I don't know if I was to get 10 of them, if they would all be bad or how long they would last. I just, I can't stand by these. Yes, they're indestructible. Yes, sometimes they're good, but a majority of the time, it's literally just a waste. As a whole kit, maybe a five, 4.5? You still have to buy a battery. So it's not out of the box, good to go. But if you have a battery, you're looking for a beater, this is a good option. Plastic actually holds up better than most metal. Metal will dent and ding because when you throw it up in the air and it hits something, it's gonna be a very, very focused area. With plastic, it absorbs through the whole shell. Granted, you could still crack this, it's just more difficult to do. So all in all, if you're looking for something that you could essentially run over 15 times and not break as a kit, this is a good option. I've got the wheel. Have you?